We are live on Africa's largest television network, the NTA. This is Nationwide, and I'm Rhoda Anona. Thank you for joining us. President Mohamed Buhari has expressed optimism with the new leadership in the National Assembly. The next four years of his administration will be more eventful, resort-oriented and responsive to the needs and aspirations of Nigerians. This was while receiving an audience, the new Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabi Amila, on a thank you visit. State House correspondent Adam Musambo has details. Still basking in the euphoria of his overwhelming election to preside over the Ninth House of Representatives, Speaker Femi Bajabi Amila was accompanied to the State House by the new Deputy Speaker Ahmed Idris Wase and other lawmakers. President Muhammad Buhari, who formally congratulated them for their victory, which he described as well deserved, urged them to exhibit high sense of responsibility and patriotism in robustly legislating for public good. Whatever I do is through national interest. For example, the Senate president and you, I didn't know you person to person before I made up my mind. It's just my observation of your performances, commitment to the party and to the country. You have the time for your job. I'm very pleased the NTA has picked this priority very well. Um, whenever I have the time to look at it, somebody is working somewhere. <laughs> which is very interesting. So I congratulate you. And um, the fundamental issue is to maintain focus on national issues. The three fundamental issues are still very relevant to us, the security and the economy, and then try to uh, make uh, everybody accountable at whatever level. This is very, very important because it will earn us the confidence of the people and then we have more time to, to do our job. Speaker Femi Bajabi Amila was full of gratitude to the president for his leadership, proper guidance, and confidence in their abilities to lead and make the desired impact in the National Assembly. And on this, he promised they will not fail to deliver. The confidence you have reposed in us we will definitely not disappoint you. Uh, as, as it was painful in the last four years, uh, for those of you outside, it was also very painful for us. You have quite a number of members in that house uh, this next four years in the Ninth Assembly that are ready to champion the cause of this party and your cause so that you can leave a legacy, a major legacy uh, that will last the test of time in Nigeria before you leave in four years. So that's what you consider us, your foot soldiers, your legislators, and uh, we will always give you the objective, the truth, of um, what the situation is. And we'll try and work as much as possible with the executive. Described as the most experienced lawmaker in the House of Representatives, the new speaker, Femi Bajabi Amila, was the leader of the House in the Earth National Assembly, during which the new deputy speaker was also the deputy House leader. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Senate is to write to President Muhammad Buhari officially informing him that a quorum of the Senate of the Ninth Assembly has been assembled and that its presiding officers have been elected. Ignatia Sunko tells us more from the Red Chambers. Well, President Muhammad Buhari had written to clap to the National Assembly, Sanyo Malori, directing the inauguration of the Ninth Assembly. This is pursuant to Order 1, Rule 2 of the Senate Standing Orders 2015. Well, that has been done. And then in its uh, first legislative plenary, the Senate has resolved to write to the President, officially informing him that the Ninth Senate has been inaugurated and its principal officers elected. We have a ranking Senator, Senator Kapiru Gaya. Well, first of all, we thank Almighty Allah for bringing us back here and working with a new team of the Senate leader we, uh, we elected and the deputy Senate, uh, uh, the Senate uh, president we elected and then the deputy Senate president. Uh, we believe, um, when our, the president has given us directives to the CNA that should now inaugurate the assembly, the Senate and the House. And we thank God it is done. And then the new leadership decided now to send a letter to the president that yes, we are set, the elections have been done and we are ready to go to business. That shows a sign of good beginning. That shows that the leadership of Ahmed Lohan uh, is going to be a good tenor, and we hope and pray we'll give him all the cooperation he needed 
and uh, all the support they all need both himself and the new uh, principal officer they are, going, where they are going to nominate. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. All right. Well, the Senate has sworn in the right. Senator Rocha Zokrocha, representing Imo West Senatorial District of Imo State. Now, with this inauguration, 108 senators have been inaugurated, remaining one from Imo North. This is what we have for you from the Red Chamber at the moment. Ignatius Unko there from the Red Chambers. Now, the House of Representatives has directed House Clerk to notify President Muhammadu Buhari on the election of its Speaker, Femi Gbajabi Amila, and Deputy Speaker, Idris Hakmet Wase, for the Ninth Assembly. Having assembled and formed a quorum, the Speaker, Femi Gbajabi Amila, will, while presiding over Thursday's plenary, which is also the first day of legislative business, directed the clerk to inform the Secretary to the Government of the Federation to notify the President of the lawmakers' readiness to receive messages. The Senate will also be informed of similar developments at the House of Representatives. House members passed resolutions on two matters of urgent public importance and thereafter went into an executive session. We'll bring you details of this in our subsequent news belt. Now, the Supreme Court has sacked a two term House of Representative member representing Jalingo Zingyur of Federal Constituency, Aminu Ibrahim Mali of the All Progressives Congress, and affirmed Kashimu Belo Megari, having won all the Progressives Congress primary elections conducted on the 5th of October 2018. The case was filed by Kashimu Belo Megari after his name was allegedly substituted on the 18th of October last year with the, that of Aminu Mali. Justice Chima Nweze, who led the five panel of justices, set aside the judgment of the Court of Appeal, Yola Division, which earlier affirmed the two-term member as the winner of the party's primary election and upheld the judgment of the trial court. Justice Oweze fought on the grounds which the appellate court used to deliver its judgment that the suit was filed out of time. The justices also agreed that the course of action was actually filed within time, that the course of action actually arose from the time the appellant discovered that his name was wrongfully substituted, and not on the day which him the appellant won the primaries of the second respondent. I have programs for my constituents, more especially youths. As a youth, I will make sure I empower youths that are my colleagues so that we can better our tomorrow. The court also ordered INEC to issue certificate of return to Kashibu Belo Megari. There are some critical issues that cannot be forgotten with the passage of the 2019 elections and must be urgently addressed before any major election. This is coming from the United Nations Special Envoy to Africa and the Sahel during a visit to INEC head office in Gabuja. Mie Ogidi reports. The elections are over and those who secured the will of the electorate are settling for business but left in its wake many memories, some regrettable, others beautiful. The long list of night one political parties, mode of party primaries, and illegal tussles, the do or die nature of some candidates, and the accreditation process of party agents, are the regrettable memories for the United Nations Special Envoy to Africa and the Sahel, and emergency measures are required for this emergency situation by INEC. And the number of political parties in certain elections in our West Africa and Sahel sub-region has posed a challenge recently. And it's not only here in Nigeria that we need to look at this issue of number of political parties, their mode of registration, etc. We hope to conclude the ongoing review of the 2019 general elections in the next two months. These reviews have become standard practice by the Commission and involve all stakeholders across the electoral process. Immediately thereafter, we shall engage with the leadership of the Ninth National Assembly. There is so much work to do. 
and of fellowship that excites the INEC boss. And most of the issues will be addressed, the INEC chair promised, bearing in mind the want of time. Mayor Ogede, NT News. Higido is in Lagos and has more stories on Nationwide. Higido, it's over to you. Thank you, Rhoda, and welcome to Lagos. The Nigeria Customs Service and Benin Republic Customs have concluded plans to integrate importers and exporters declarations at the border station as part of ECOWAS mandates to facilitate trade. The Assistant Controller General of Customs on A, Benjamin Abba, met this known during a stakeholder sensitization program between Nigeria Customs Service and Benin Customs at SEME. Nosa Usla reports. Native will feature single declaration deal with corrupt tendencies, reduce cost of doing business, promote trade, prevent revenue losses, and curb smuggling across the two countries' borders. Speaking at a stakeholder sensitization program tagged Nigeria Bene, Customs Connectivity for Border Seamless Transactions, the Assistant Comptroller General said the single declarations made at either of the countries will be electronically accessible to both countries. Before we do that, we have agreed with the Bini Custom, the two countries, that we should do what they call bilateral connectivity, which we address some of the trade problem that happens within this corridor. The customs boss added that both the NCS and Bene Customs held and agreed on coordinated border management to enhance ease of doing business and reduce time spent on border trading. Director General of Benin Republic Customs, Saka Boko Inosa Charles, said the initiative will reduce smuggling and facilitate trade within the two countries. He described the initiative as a dream come true, adding that moves for achieving the initiative began about 15 years ago when leaders of both countries initiated the interconnectivity system in Lagos, Nosa, Osula, NTA News. Nigerians have been advised to reduce the use of fossil fuel and ensure their vehicles are in good condition in order to reduce air pollution in the society. This was the submission of environmentalists at an event organized by a non-governmental organization to commemorate the 2019 World Environment Day in Lagos. Imole Ayotokede has details. Organization estimates in 2012 that about 46,750 deaths occurred in Nigeria as a result of hair pollution with states like Onicha, Aba, Kaduna, and Humuahia as the worst polluted towns. These public lectures by the Society for Environmental Toxicology and Pollution Mitigation is aimed at creating awareness on air pollution. The United Nations has decided to focus on air pollution. It's an opportunity for us to know that this is a major issue. It's a global issue. It's also a local issue. Environmental experts at this forum trace the high rate of air pollution to worn-out generators and rickety vehicles that vent harmful smoke into the atmosphere, including kerosene stoves that burn sooty flames indoors. Cigarette smoking is also one of the major causes of indoor air pollution. Air pollution does not obey boundaries, you know. That's why all hands must be on deck to cut it off. Air pollution comprises of um, particles, fine particles, and which can irritate the nasal cavity of humans. It can trigger inflation because the body will see the air pollution as infection. The experts provide possible solutions to improve air quality. What Lagos State Government has done is to partner with the private sector to ensure our vehicle go through the mini rudiment of vehicle inspection. Speakers are of the view that exploring renewable energy sources and green technologies by governments at all levels, industries, communities and individuals will go a long way in improving air quality across the nation. In Lagos, in Moliayo Tukidi, NTA News. Periodically, footwears, umbrellas, and other rainy season-related items are usually in high demand during particular months of the year. 
a marker or visited some markets in the metropolis to determine if the increase in demand for these items affects their prices. As the year progresses into the sixth month, increasing rainfall is the norm, which often exposes people to getting wet and soaked. Umbrellas, rubber footwears, shower caps, raincoats and rain boots are essential commodities often used to protect the body from harsh weather conditions as they are sold in different designs, shapes and sizes. Um, because it's nice and it's for fashion, people come to buy. I have the one of 4K, I have the one of 35, I have the one of 30,000. We have very high demand out of this time from different parts of Nigeria. This is where umbrellas are very, very scarce and we have to inflate the prices just to be able to meet the demands. This one, this one now, as of then it was 350, 370, now we sell it for 400 at carton rate and you get it outside for 450, 500. Some customers react to the difference in prices of these items. I bought it 350 naira. Now, this one has spoiled, as you can see. It has holes everywhere. Now, I go to buy another one. They are telling me it's 3,500 naira. For what? I shout. <laughs> Why will I buy 3,500? The story is, however, different with rain boots, as it seems to be out of fashion. People don't really demand on it, as in last year, two years time. So now it's cost than before. In all, these go to show that the laws of demand and supply is evident in the buying and selling of these items. In Lagos, Amaka O, NT News. That's our contribution from Lagos. Nationwide continues in Abuja after the break. Enjoy the best of African football as NTA, Africa's largest television network and hotspots, Nigeria's foremost sports production and marketing company, bring you all 52 matches of the Africa Cup of Nations, Egypt 2019 live from June 21 to July 19, 2019. Yes, all 52 games will hit your screens in crystal clear digital quality. It's your guarantee of a memorable viewing experience and a wonderful cost-effective opportunity for corporate Nigeria to reach tens of millions of Nigerians. For sponsorship and commercial support, contact Abubakar on 0803-331-0175 and Felix on 0803-308-2375. Hot Sports, masters of the game. NTA, you can't beat the rich. NTA Television College JAWS announces admissions into two-year diploma programs in film and television production, television engineering, and broadcast journalism. The sale of forms will commence on the 13th of May and run through 30th July 2019. Admission forms can be obtained from all marketing offices, NTA state capital stations, zonal centers, or at the office of the academic secretary, NTA Television College, Rayfield JAWS. On payment of a non-refundable fee of 7,500 naira in bank draft in favor of NTA. NTA TV College. Applicants can also obtain the forms through the NTA TV College portal at www.ntatvc.edu.nj. Applicants are required to possess five credits in GCE or SSCE in relevant areas of study in not more than two sittings, including English and mathematics. All properly completed forms attached with photocopies of credentials must be submitted on or before 30th July 2019. For further inquiries, please visit our website at ntatvc.com or call 0803-3144-383. NTA TV College, training you to be the best you want to be. Registrar announcer. The Nigerian national flag is a sacred national symbol. It is a mark of patriotism and a show of love for our nation to fly the national flag correctly, in the right colors, right dimension, and in the right sizes for each occasion. In recent times, it has been noticed that government offices, corporate organizations, banks, embassies, and other notable institutions fly faded, shredded, and haggard-looking versions of the national flag. This is wrong and must stop. It has also been noticed that some citizens prefer to popularize the national flag of other nations. Fellow countrymen and women, let us be patriotic. 
come let us show love for our motherland. Fly the correct versions of our national flag in all relevant places. Be patriotic. Be proud ambassadors of our great country. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. The Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency of Nigeria is here to help you succeed. Midan gives you entrepreneurship training that will make your business grow big. It can create access to finance. Smidon can help you prepare a good feasibility study and link you up with the finance institutions that will fund your business. It can also create access to market through local and international trade fairs, opportunity fairs, and exhibitions. Smidon also organizes programs to identify innovative entrepreneurs and promote their business ideas. Contact us at Plot 35, Potak of Crescent, Area 11, Garaki, Abuja, or visit our website, www.smedan.gov.ng. You're welcome back, and if you've just joined us, you're watching Nationwide. Now, a report just reaching us says the presidential elections petition tribunal sitting in Abuja has fixed the 24th of June for its ruling on the existence or otherwise of a storage server belonging to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Inspection of the purported INEC server is one of the prayers of Atiku Abubakar of the PDP in his petition. The presidential election petitions court summoned proceedings resume proceedings with the continuation of his pre-hearing session. Counsel to Atiku Abubakar, Chris Uche, SAN, informed the court of his earlier motion to allow an inspection of the card readers and alleged storage server used by INEC for the February 23, uh, 2019 presidential election. Counsel to INEC, Ustaz Usman SAN, however, prayed the tribunal to dismiss Atiku's prayer, saying INEC does not have a storage server as all the election results were collated manually, citing a 6th of March 2019 ruling of the court which disallowed Atiku from inspecting any INEC server. Counsel to President Muhammad Buhari, Wale Olanik Meku SAN, called the attention of the court to the dangers inherent in its overturning its earlier ruling on same. The Presidential Election Petitions Court deferred its ruling to the 24th of June 2019. Activities marking the nation's 2019 Democracy Day may have come and gone, but memories will still linger on in the minds of the people. One of such activities is the photo exhibition tagged Bain Buhari during the gala night that preceded the main event of the celebration. Now, State House correspondent Gide Onifade tells us more. You, you may be wondering what Akambi Boss is doing right here in the Hall of Fame at the State House Conference Center. Well, I'll tell you more about that. Do you know that the vehicle is famous uh, for mass transit, especially in the 80s till date? But what we're going to talk about here is the inscription, the third coming. The third coming is not, however, referring to the vehicle here, but to an individual who, right from the 80s, has made incursions into the political scene of the country and known for his integrity and big heart for not only the elite, but for the commoners. And that person is President Muhammad Buhari. So the bus journey is also an expression of the president's journey around. He always says that he went through 36 states, including FC3. So we're looking for a representation of the energy the president put into winning this last election and the energy he has put into leading Nigeria to the next level. This photo exhibition displays the moments of his interactions with the people over the years, especially in the last four years. The president is here leading other heads of states and governments to inspect the exciting moments as captured by the camera lens of Bayo Omoboriowo.
President Buhari is a, a legend. He's an exceptional person. His character, his personality is what any photographer would dream to document. And to me, I'm not just photographing the president, I'm preserving history. I'm telling the story of today for tomorrow's audience. Now, the, the, the question Mr. Bayo Mobilio has raised with his photo exhibition is that what will history record about you at the end of the journey? In the State House, Jude Unifade, NT News. Beautiful exhibition there, if you ask me. Now, the pronouncement of June 12 as Nigeria's Democracy Day and its maiden commemoration marks another history in Nigeria. Doing Dia has this report on the commemoration of the day across the country. From the south to the north, the rhyme on the special occasion of June 12 is the new Democracy Day in Nigeria an event which brings to mind the selfless sacrifices of the heroes of democracy in the country. From Akure, the Ondo state capital, comes a report that indigents of the state have again commended President Muhammad Buhari for recognizing and confirming June 12 as the new democracy day. From what we have been seeing now, progress will come to this country. And from Lafia Nasrallah State, correspondent Abubakar Akwanga reports that some Nigerians describe the June 12 Democracy Day celebration as a good omen for the future of the country. Especially Abiola and uh, the circumstances we found ourselves during that election. Uh, this thing is just a step in the right direction. From Potakot River State comes a report that residents of the state want the political class to use the occasion of the new Democracy Day to ensure that the tenet of democratic governance is upheld. And the struggle to democratize Nigeria to the level where we are all proud of this country, where this country becomes the umbrella for all of us truly, is the real essence of having June 12. As Nigerians continues to bask in the euphoria of the new Democracy Day, the consensus is for everyone to contribute his or a quota towards ensuring that Nigeria's democracy was stronger in Abuja doing dear anti news. Nigeria will soon have dedicated agro-processing zones towards boosting agricultural production and social economic development of the country. In achieving this, the government will also take steps in addressing incessant feelings of economic stress. These were promises contained in the Democracy Day speech of President Muhammad Buhari. In this report, Musa Babali takes a look at the possible impact that this could have on the social economic well-being of Nigeria and its farmers. Since the scrapping of agriculture commodity boards 20 years ago, Nigeria lacks effective and efficient agro-processing policy programs. Farmers and processors were left with no option than to rely on market forces for demand and supply. Our farmers have made good strides. President Mahmoud Buhari's administration is pushing for a new program under the government agriculture diversification initiative towards establishing crop processing zones. Dedicated agro-industrial processing zones will be developed on a PPP basis to increase farming yields, agricultural productivity, and industrial output. Agricultural economists are of the view that the proposed special agro-industrial processing zones be the panacea to the over-dependence on food importation. Uh, what that translates to, again, is uh, increased wealth earnings for farmers. Translate also to export capacity for the economy. The federal government will also take measures to address failing of economic trees for firewood by providing more effective and alternative for energy. Failing of trees to provide energy for domestic use is taking its toll on our rainforests, our ecology and our climate. We will work to address this issue and support rural communities whose challenges of safety switching from firewood 
to cooking gas. If all these are achieved, economists are of the view that Nigeria will take her pride of place as the major producer and exporter of agricultural produce and products in Africa. Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. Meanwhile, Nigerians have continued to pour encomium on President Muhammad Buhari for naming the Abuja National Stadium after late MKO Abiola. Adibola Brooksling Sunday has known this. Late Mashud Kashima Wolawale Abiola is known as one of Nigerians who loved sports. He was involved in the development of football, especially at the grassroots level, and even had a football team. Abiola Babes, they called him the pillar of sports in Africa. In Africa, the tendency is to give glory to the man who put the, the ball into the net. It was during the Democracy Day speech of President Buhari that he took most of his listeners aback in the immortalization of the late Democrats, MKO Abiola. where I sat, were like, what? He virtually knows and understand all the people he has met in his life, up to a point that he took interest in even their social activity, like games and reading and things like that. And you can see what has finally come out, knowing Abiola as one of the greatest pillars of sports, not in Nigeria, but in Africa and the world. He decided to do that to him. Sport is a living thing. So no matter what, definitely his name will always be mentioned. The youth need to take advantage of that name so that tomorrow they can be better than Abiola and then make Nigeria great. My hope has been restored that Nigeria is going to say farewell to poverty under this leader who has situated his administration in the spirit of June 12th. June 12th is now Nigeria's Democracy Day. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Now, still staying with stories from our Democracy Day, we have Tamara Ibiwe at the National Stadium, now christened MKO Abiola Stadium. Let's get a feel of what the mood is like over there. Now, Tamara, what is it like over there? You're now at the new MKO Abiola Stadium. All right, well, sorry, uh, we can't uh, join Tamara there. The picture's there, not quite good, and there we didn't seem to have uh, audio from that uh, picture. We'll see if we can rejoin Tamara in the course of this news belt. Now, the Young Progressives Party is advocating a healthy executive legislature relationship for the overall development of the country. This was the major resolution of the party's National Working Committee meeting in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf reports. This is the first National Working Committee's meeting of the Young Progressives Party after the 2019 general elections. Major agenda of the meeting is good governance after the elections. The party wants a smooth relationship between all tiers of government to accelerate development as envisioned by the present administration. May I admonish all executive and parliamentarian representatives of a great party, the YPP, to inculcate the global practice of leadership which is known as a servant. Leader is supposed to be a servant and not a king. It's a king that wants to rule, but leaders, they lead, they serve their people with all great deal of passion and patriotism. The National Working Committee's meeting attended by newly elected members of the National Assembly on the party's platform provided another opportunity for them to reassure the party of their commitment to the ideals of YPP. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. All right, earlier on we told you that uh, we had Tamara Ibiwe at the newly christened MQ Abiola Stadium, formerly known as the National Stadium. Let's see if we can rejoin her over there. Tamara, if you can hear me, uh, please go ahead. What's the mood like at uh, the, the, the newly christened MQ Abiola Stadium? Hello. 
Tamara, can you hear me? All right, uh, well, sorry, we still can't join Tamara there again. We'll see what we can do if we can still go back there. All right, now let's uh, join our Maiduguri Network Center for more stories on Nationwide. Thank you, Rhoda, and a warm welcome to Meiduguri. The 9th Borno State House of Assembly has been inaugurated with the former Speaker, Abdul Karim Lawan, re-elected as the new Speaker. The inauguration took place at the State Assembly Complex in Meiduguri, the Borno State capital, where Clerk of the House, Ibrahim Audeguli, swore in the members. Memuna Garba now reports. There was no contest as the inauguration started with the swearing in of the re-elected Speaker and Deputy Speaker of the 9th Assembly. The Speaker of Borno State House of Assembly, Abdul Karim Lawan from Guzamala Local Government, was endorsed alongside Abdullahi Musa Askira from Askira Uba Local Government as Deputy Speaker in the All Progressives Congress Party dominated Assembly. Shortly after being sworn in, Abdul Karim Lawan assured to work for the betterment of the people of Borno by providing better legislation. He said the House will support the administration of Professor Babagana Umar Azulum, which focused more on strengthening security, job creation, food security, education, and accountability, stressing that the House will ensure that appropriate laws are passed in addition to rigorous oversight functions, among other legislative activities. To further put the House in motion, the Speaker immediately appointed other presiding officers to include Leader of the House, Dige Mohammed from Kala Balge, Chief Whip, Baba Alimodu Mafa, Deputy Leader, Aimufoni from Chibok, and Deputy Whip, Audu Mustafa from Magumeri. The 28-member Borno State House of Assembly has 19 members returning, while nine are first-timers. In Maiduguri, Naimuna Garba, NTA News. Security challenges, accessing remote areas, and late arrival of election results to coalition centers are some of the major setbacks of the 2019 general elections in Borno State. This were some of the concerns enumerated by election stakeholders at a review meeting of the 2019 general elections organized by the Independent National Electoral Commission held in Meduguri, the Borno State capital. Mohammed Ibrahim reports. The election management body, INEC, promised the country a report card of the 2019 general elections and review meetings like this are organized across the country to document. The electoral umpire under this forum seeks to better understand the success factors and move to sustain the areas for future engagements. We have civil society organizations that have either been observers or in one capacity or the other. All the CEOs will be invited again and we hear from them as well. The open review of the last elections in the state also dwelt on challenges encountered as well as solutions on the way forward captured by work groups of the participants including discussions. The commission intends to invite other stakeholders including the media, the security and the rest of them. Very difficult circumstance. Even the internet connectivity was very poor, and that somehow affected the optimal performance of the card readers. The operational frameworks reviewed cover voter education, publicity, election security, recruitment, deployment of personnel and materials, as well as logistics, among others. Submissions by INOC officials in the state are expected to be forwarded to a national review meeting which will be followed by a retreat that will involve local and international stakeholders. In Meduguri, Mohammed Ibrahim, NTA News. Twenty years down the lane of uninterrupted democratic system of government, Nigerians are optimistic that their lives have changed for the better. Residents of Meduguri, the Borno State capital, say Democracy is the best practice that is promoting greater participation of the people in governance. Jadwa John Jasni has more on the story. It could be recalled that President Muhammad Buhari had earlier approved June 12 as Democracy Day commencing from this year, 2019. The day was earmarked to recognize and acknowledge the efforts of political legends who fought to increase an avenue for improvement of civil liberties increased press freedom and better representation, among others. A degree resident who spoke to NTA News testified that for the last 20 years, 
Democracy has brought about development in virtually all facets of human life. In a military regime, you cannot dictate to the military what you want and what you don't want. But in a democracy, even in the remote of the villages, the villagers will come and tell the government, this is what we want. We want water, we want school, we want medicine, we want... and the government has listened to them. Democracy is rule for the people, by the people, and of the people. And, and therefore, the order to do that is to allow people to speak up their mind. Uh, right or wrong, if it's wrong, they have to pay for it. If it's right, they be paid for. In any democratic setting, if people have the choice to say what they want and they can appeal to the government at least to do this or that, democracy supersedes military rule. It's an achievement, and we are very delighted to see this occasion has happened. With Nigerians continuing to enjoy the democratic system of governance. Residents are optimistic that the system will continue to bring rapid development, progress, as well as promote peace and unity among the populace. In Meduguri, Jadwajan Jesmin, NTA News. That's a contribution from Meduguri. Rhoda has more reports for us on Nationwide. Good afternoon to you. All right, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Now, let's uh, see um, if we've been able to reestablish that connection with uh, Tamara Ibiwe, who's at uh, the newly christened... Uh, MQ Abiola Stadium. Tamara Biwe, it's over to you. Thank you, Rhoda. It's exciting for sports-loving Nigerians to know that uh, the Abuja National Stadium has been christened Moshud Abiola National Stadium yesterday by President Muhammad Buhari. The social media has been buzzing. Sports administrators and lovers have been commending President Muhammad Buhari for renaming the um, national facility after an icon, a sports um, personality that um, went the extra mile to ensure that um, there's sports development in Nigeria. And joining me to talk more about um, the commendations that have been lauding uh, this renaming by President Muhammad Buhari is that Tolu Lokwe Ogutimeyi. He's a vice uh, chairman of the Sports Writers Association of Nigeria, FCC chapter. Thanks for coming, uh, Tolu Lokwe Ogutimeyi. It's a pleasure to be here this afternoon and to talk about the uh, wonderful decision uh, taken by the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Uh, sports love in Nigeria so have been singing the praises of um, President Muhammad Buhari for naming the this national uh, facility after late Moshu Abiola. How would you react to this? As a monumental decision taken by the number one city in Nigeria, nobody saw it coming, but we are just watching our TV and uh, looking and listening to what the president was saying, only for him to come out with an uh, pronouncement. And everybody was shocked to be at Bumaru at to see that that should be taken. Uh, it has taken up beyond uh, what we are really... Uh, uh, looking at, and they have also been able to bring the eyes of everybody, matters, matters in the sporting world, down to Abuja to take a look at the sporting edifice, a, a monumental uh, uh, project built way back in 2003. And I think at this point in time, uh, there are so many people who want to see things happen at the next year. Uh, sports lovers also uh, say that um, it is not all about the naming, but to ensure that um, the name of this facility goes with international competitions must be hosted more often in this facility, not just football. All right, uh, Tamara Biwe there at the, the newly christened MQ Abiola uh, Stadium. Tamara Biwe, thank you very much. We're sorry uh, that's not what we can take from there. Now, President Mohamed Buhari felicitates with the chairman and publisher of Vanguard Media Limited, Sam Amuka Pemo, on the occasion of his 84th birthday anniversary. President Buhari, his family, the media industry in Nigeria and beyond uh, celebrate the award-winning journalist, columnist, publisher and elder statesman who stared the conscience of the nation for a greater part of his lifetime. In a statement by the special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Femi Adesina, President Buhari believes that his devotion, sense of duty and leadership in the media industry are example to all. He recognizes the octogenarian's unrelenting 
contribution to promoting professionalism in the media industry at a time when disinformation and fake news threatens the very essence of a free and unbiased press in a democratic society. President Buhari wishes Mr. Mukapemu good health, happiness and God's continued benevolence on this special day. Stigmatization and discrimination are words too familiar with persons living with albinism. As Nigeria joins the world to mark International Albinism Awareness Day, attention is being drawn to the plight of this group of persons and how resilient they have been against all odds. Gloria Kenham reports. 29-year-old master's degree holder Eunice Uchechi Umokocha has been searching for a job for the past seven years. Despite her qualifications, she has been rejected severally due to the color of her skin. I've had series of biopsies, like six of them, because I was now aware that the sun was actually affecting my skin. The meat then was salt. I shouldn't eat salt, I shouldn't eat pepper, that all these things will give me the skin bone, the freckles and the black spots. This is 40-year-old Lukman Matthew, one of many Nigerians with albinism, participating in the awareness walk as part of activities marking the global event, aimed at highlighting the challenges faced by this set of people. Every individual uh, out there, whether in Nigeria or anywhere around the world, to think about our personal behaviours and attitude and how they impact on others. That's why we're reaching out to, to the government, the federal government, the states, to help us so that we can capture the actual number of persons with albinism in their states. Albinism is a congenital absence of pigmentation in the skin, hair and eyes. This conference therefore brings a ray of hope to the plight of albinos as issues bothering on their health, education and stigmatization were discussed. The theme for this year's celebration, which is still standing strong, advancing the cause of albinism, makes it possible for the likes of Lukman and Eunice to have hope for a better future. In Abuja, Glory Ekanem, NTA News. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, we have more stories, so stay with us. They are there at the crack of dawn. They are there busy preparing while we rise for our day. They are there silently, guarding, waiting, listening, and watching. They are there ready in the sky above and the waters below, in the blistering heat of the day, in the dead of night, willing, indefatigable, determined in the defense of the sovereignty of our country. They are our first line of defense and our last. They who have paid the ultimate price in defending us. They are fathers and uncles. They are mothers and sisters and girlfriends and boyfriends. They are brothers and cousins and best friends and neighbors. They are classmates, colleagues, and citizens of this nation. They are our defenders and deserve our respect, our prayers, our thoughts. Nigeria, please support our armed forces. These days, people get their news and information for more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stare disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. One football confederation, 24 teams, six stadiums, four cities, 504 African stars, one trophy. The Africa Cup of Nations, Egypt 2019, comes alive from June 21 with the showpiece final on July 19, 2019. Watch the 52 matches of the tournament live on Africa's biggest and largest television network, NTA, in partnership with Hot Sports. 
Be part of the biggest soccer fiesta in the African continent as the Super Eagles go on a bold mission to clinch the prestigious title for the fourth time to the excitement of millions of fans across the length and breadth of Nigeria. For inquiries, please contact Obubakar on 0803-331-0175 and Felix on 0803-308-2375. NTA, you can't beat the rich. You can follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook at NTA Network News, Instagram at NTA Network, Twitter at NTA News Now, YouTube at NTA News Online, or visit www.nta.ng. For live streaming, visit www.nta.ng slash live. Now, you can stay updated on the go. Be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop, or iPad. Or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can't beat the rich. Get the latest news and updates from across Nigeria on NTA Nationwide. NTA Nationwide, weekdays by 4 p.m. Get it first. Get it fresh. You welcome back. 14 crew members were arrested and three vessels impounded in connection with illegal oil bunkering in River State. This latest arrest is part of Nigerian Navy coordinated operations as it strengthens campaign against economic sabotage in the Niger Delta. Kingsley Amajiri reports. The three vessels handed over to the EFCC include MV Peripamo, MV Morty, and MV Loving Kindness. They were arrested between May 6th and May 27th, 2019. This followed enhanced surveillance of the waterways within the NNS Pathfinder's areas of operation. 224 metric tons of illegally refined petroleum products were discovered in one of the vessels. 14 of the crew members were arrested alongside two other captains apprehended for allegedly training coast guards without any authorization. In line with uh, directives from higher headquarters, I am today handing over the three vessels and their crew members, 14 in all, and the two captains, Captain A.K. and Captain, Alex, who, and Captain Felix, who were found for carrying out fraudulent activities in the name of Coast Guard recruitment, I'm handing them over to the EFCC. So, and we have gone uh, pretty far with most of these cases. Maybe before the end of this year, we'll have quite a number of convictions in cases handed over by the Nigerian Navy. The decision of the naval authorities to hand over the suspects to the EFCC is in compliance with the harmonized standard operating procedure for security agencies in the country. In Port Harcourt, Kingsley Amajiri, NTA News. President Mohamed Buhari has restated Nigeria's support for the people of Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic in their quest for self-determination and independence. This was while receiving an audience the Sahrawi leader, President Brahim Gahali. State House correspondent Adamu Sambu reports that the Nigerian leader also received President George Opongwe of Liberia. President Brahim Ghali of the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic was in Nigeria in respect of the National Democracy Day celebrations held last Wednesday. His visit to the State House was to formally commend Nigeria's past support for Sadr and the liberation movements on the continent, especially during President Buhari's tenure as military head of state. While congratulating the Nigerian leader on his re-election and the successful Democracy Day celebrations, President Brahim Ghali maintains that the weight of Nigeria's support remained crucial to the final resolution of the continued colonization of his people. Essentially, they are urging Mr. President to intervene to ensure that the issue of referendum at the uh, Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic is undertaken as soon as possible. And uh, Mr. President assured the President of Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic that he is going to do all in his uh, power 
to make sure that uh, AU and United Nations are energized to be able to hold the referendum in that republic. President Muhammad Buhari said Nigeria remains committed to supporting efforts of the African Union and the United Nations towards finding lasting solution to the Sahrawi problem. It will be recalled that Nigeria recognized Sadr on November 11, 1984, when President Buhari was head of state. President George Openware of Liberia also came calling at the presidential villa to offer his best wishes as President Muhammad Buhari began his second four-year term of consolidation. President Weir, who also attended Nigeria's National Democracy Day celebrations, met the Nigerian leader behind closed doors for about 30 minutes, but details of their discussions were not made public. As you know, uh, Liberia and Nigeria have uh, come a long way. After the initial uh, introductions, actually, they, they retire in for a one-on-one. -on -one. But essentially, uh, President Weir briefed Mr. President about the situation in Liberia and the emerging challenges in Liberia. I'm sure uh, they, have, uh, they have achieved good understanding. And uh, I'm sure Mr. President will also direct uh, further action on all the issues that the Liberian president has raised with him. President George Openware, who was a former professional footballer, came to office last year as the 25th president of Liberia. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. A quick check on the weather prospects for Friday. On behalf of myself and the crew, we thank you for watching. I'm Rhoda Anonam. Enjoy the rest of your day.